Hello, I am Dr. J.D. Mukherjee. I am Principal Director and Head of Neurology at the Max Super Speciality Hospital at Saket in New Delhi. So today we are going to talk about Alzheimer's disease. As you may know, Alzheimer's disease is the commonest type of dementia and it is actually very common in people who are above 60 years of age. Now what happens in, in any kind of dementia, particularly in Alzheimer's dementia, is that you start having short-term memory loss, that is recent memory. You start getting confused. You start losing names of objects and relatives. And finally, your judgment is impaired. And in the last stages, you even forget the name of your children, the name of your spouse. And maybe at a later stage, you can also become very aggressive. It starts very subtly. It starts with forgetting names of daily objects like you forget this is a pen, though you may remember that that is the instrument which is used to write. Then you forget where you have kept your phone, where you have kept your important documents and so on and so forth. And finally, you have impaired judgment. You don't know whether to turn right or to, to left. You forget the way back to your office or to your home. You later on start uh, behaving in an abnormal manner. You open your clothes where you're not supposed to open your clothes. You transgress into the kitchen thinking that this is the washroom. And, and in the later stage, you even start forgetting the names of your relatives. And you may even forget that he or she is your spouse. And lastly, but not the least, some of these patients can also become aggressive and violent. And they may indulge in violent activities like throwing objects or trying to hit people. So we need to be very careful about these kind of symptoms. So when we talk of all these tests, what does that lead to? We, can, we look to see where the, if the brain is atrophied or not. Now, if you see, this is a model where the brain is normal in shape and size, but here you can see the brain is little atrophied. Atrophied means these gyri and sulci are become more prominent and the volume of the brain is less. So this is one of the things which happens in cases of Alzheimer's disease. So one of the natural question is what causes uh, Alzheimer's disease? There's no one single cause. It's a combination, it is multifactorial. When I say multifactorial, I mean the causes can be genetic, the causes can be lifestyle disorders, and, the life, and it can be also environmental. Now, one of the latest environmental factors which has come in the causation of Alzheimer's disease is climate warming and pollution. Now, genetic factors, you generally have a relative who has got Alzheimer's disease. And there is one particular gene, apolipoprotein E. The deficiency of that gene causes, a defect in the gene rather, causes uh, Alzheimer's disease. Now lifestyle factors, smoking, drinking, all of this can combine. Now there is a particular type in India, which is because there is a high incidence of vascular disorders in India, like cerebral vascular disease, cardiac disease and obesity. And there is, not much of literature available from the rural India. All these also we suspect have a causation of Alzheimer's disease. So when we talk about all the causes, which like I told you the multifactorial causes, they all lead to probably the accumulation of abnormal protein called tau protein or amyloid in the brain, which leads to disruption of the neural network. And that is what finally leads to dementia. Now we come to how to diagnose and what are the tests which are required for Alzheimer's disease. So the basic diagnosis would be a clinical judgment. We do something called a mini mental examination which should be done in the local language depending on what language the patient speaks. Then we have a physical examination and then we order some basic investigations like an MRI brain. Why we need to do an MRI brain is to rule out other reasons like a tumor, like a small subdural hematoma, which, are blood, which is a collection of blood clot in the brain. So all these need to be excluded. Now we also need to see that there is no liver dysfunction, there is no kidney dysfunction, there is no glucose abnormality. All this also needs to be ruled out. Now this coming to the specific tests for Alzheimer's disease, one of the tests that we do is a PET CT brain, where we come to know which part of the brain is functioning more and which part of the brain is functioning less. There are other biomarkers which are a little complicated but not easily available for diagnosing Alzheimer's disease. Coming to the management and treatment of Alzheimer's disease, it requires multi-level intervention. Now the intervention will be not only medical, it has also got a non-medical angle. 
I will first talk about the non-medical angle. The non-medical angle would be involvement of the family members, which is of paramount importance in managing patients with Alzheimer's disease. The family members or the caretakers have to be trained to look after the personal hygiene of the patient, the nutritional needs of the patient, the vaccination needs of the patient, and how to handle his anger moments, how to train him to wear his clothes properly, and not to harm himself. Also, in addition to this, you have to change the structure of the house so that he doesn't fall. He can guide himself to the washroom. He can eat with some ease. All this needs to be incorporated in the overall management of Alzheimer's patient. There are certain drugs to control his anger. There are certain drugs to improve his short-term memory. But let me tell you, those do not affect the long-term outcome in Alzheimer's patient. So, when somebody asks me, how can we prevent Alzheimer's disease? The answer is that you cannot prevent Alzheimer's disease, but you can intervene in Alzheimer's disease. How do we intervene in Alzheimer's disease? As research is going on in a big way, uh, we can at least identify the, the risk factors for Alzheimer's disease and we can modify those risk factors and prevent Alzheimer's disease happening. Like somebody has got a vascular dysfunction, so we can prevent them effectively. So all these contributing negative factors which actually add up to causing Alzheimer's disease can be avoided and that can prevent Alzheimer's disease. There's no specific drug or treatment which can prevent Alzheimer's disease. There's no vaccination as such as of now which can prevent Alzheimer's disease. Research is going on at a big pace and sooner than later we will have some anti-tau protein and um, drugs which can possibly prevent this progression of Alzheimer's disease. And some of us may even wonder what is the final outcome of these patients? So by and large, these patients live their natural life. Uh, they don't die before. There's no reason to die before uh, their natural cause of death. But what happens is they may have a little bit of difficult times. So if we take care of them, they will have a better quality of life. And dignity is very important. Dignified living for patients with Alzheimer's disease should be our motto. We need to train more people who can train such patients and that would go a long way in handling Alzheimer's disease, particularly in our country. Now, some of you may ask me, what is the final message for patients with Alzheimer's disease? I think identifying them early, training healthcare workers, training the family members, so that we give a better outcome to these patients. And we, there we were maybe having various vaccinations in future to prevent this Alzheimer's disease. So I think we have a bright future for patients with Alzheimer's disease. And we don't have to be despondent that this patient or that patient or this family member has got Alzheimer's disease. Thank you very much.